Hi everyone, I'm Ludwig Sidemark from Lancaster University and with me for this presentation we also have Chris Clark from Lancaster and Xu Sung Jang from K11. And we're going to present our work on Outrun Pursuits, case-assisted selection of occluded objects in virtual reality. Occlusion presents a principal problem for selection in 3D environment as it reduces the target area for pointing and increases selection ambiguity. Users can change their position to improve the view they have of a target However, this is a limited option when movement is restricted, such as when sitting or if the tracking space is limited. In this work, we propose to support selection of occluded objects with outline pursuits. As shown in the figure, the concept is to display the outlines of objects that lie in pointing direction and to generate a distinct motion along each outline. Users can then disambiguate the selection by following the motion around their intended target with their eyes. But before we go into the details of Outland Pursuits, I would like to take a step back and look at some related work. Uh, the most commonly used metaphor for selection in 3D environments is ray casting, where the user controls a ray via a controller or body part. Ray casting allows selection of out of reach targets, however, targets at greater distances are harder to select due to limitations of human motor control and motion tracking. To compensate for accuracy and occlusion issues, Ray casting can be combined with volumetric techniques for selection. And this requires disambiguation from initially selected objects. And this can be done via an additional manual step or by applying heuristics or contextual information for implicit disambiguation. With gaze, it is easy to be accurate from a user perspective, but sensing is difficult, which limits usability. Pursuits offers an alternative selection technique where the user follow a moving target with their gaze. A selection is then performed by correlating the target and the eye's motions without the need for eye tracking calibration. Selection is robust, provided candidate motion are sufficiently different. When prior work has used smooth pursuit for selection and disambiguation in VR, however, for selection of objects presented in motion. And the distinct novelty of our work is that we instead present motion around static 3D objects to facilitate their selection by pursuit without changing the object's size or position. And Outlines has many utilities in virtual environments. Uh, it is used to show objects that are interactive or to highlight the current selection, and also as an accessibility tool to increase the visual contrast between objects. Uh, and we add to the utility of outlines by augmenting them with motions for smooth pursuit interaction. With that being said, Chris is now going to break down the Ultron Pursuit and the steps of interaction. Thanks, Ludwig. From a user's perspective, selecting an object using Outline Pursuits involves two stages. The first stage is candidate selection, which is used to reveal potential targets using coarse grain pointing. The second stage is selecting one target from the candidates using Smooth Pursuit based selection. We will first look at the candidate selection stage, which consists of cone casting, outline extraction, and motion generation. Candidate targets are selected using a cone casting technique. This stage is designed to encourage coarse grained, lazy pointing, which can be performed with any type of pointing modality. By limiting the number of candidates for selection, we reduce visual clutter and increase the robustness of selection using smooth pursuits. As we are in a controlled virtual environment, we can accurately extract the outline of virtual objects. This has two main purposes. In the first instance, it reveals to the user which items are available for selection, similar to the way in which outline highlighting is traditionally used. Secondly, it provides a predictable path for which we can present the smooth pursuit target movement without having to change the properties of the object itself. Once we have extracted the outlines, we can augment them with target movements to be used for smooth pursuit selection. The goal here is that each moving target moves in a unique trajectory. Unlike previous smooth pursuit approaches, the shape of the trajectory is dependent upon the candidate objects, and therefore, we rely solely on the spatiotemporal properties of the target movement. 
In the first instance, we utilize the direction in which the targets move to create two groups, clockwise and anticlockwise. For more than two candidate targets, we set the number of rotations per second to be equal. We then maximize the phase differences between target movements to ensure each trajectory is as unique as possible. We ensure that the velocity of the target is within a comfortable range for smooth pursuit eye movements. We also have to carefully consider how to present outlines and target movements in the presence of occlusion. And for this, we looked at four different variants. Whole outline, where the entire outline is visible, even under occlusion. Shared outline, where the target moves along the visible part of the object. Cut outline, where the target moves along the shortest path to the next visible part. And finally, jump outline, where the target jumps to the next visible part. A user study with 16 participants revealed that performance and usability ratings were consistent across the different outlines. This indicates that designers can freely choose an outline that fits their application without risking major performance penalties. We chose to continue with the whole outline as this is the only variant which can be used for selection under full occlusion. Once the candidate targets have been revealed, the final stage is to select one of the targets. This is achieved using smooth pursuit eye movements to disambiguate one target amongst many, followed by confirming the selection. Target disambiguation occurs when the user follows the relevant target using their gaze, resulting in a smooth pursuit eye movement. The system takes as input the user's eye positions and all of the candidate target positions as spatio-temporal trajectories. We then calculate a similarity metric for each target to determine which, if any, the user is following. Traditionally, disambiguation and confirmation occur in a seamless fashion for smooth pursuit interactions, when the similarity value of one of the targets surpasses a threshold. In this work, we also consider separating disambiguation and confirmation stages. For this, we need only be concerned with the target that gives the best match to the eye movements at any given moment, therefore removing the requirement for a threshold. This may be used for selection based upon specific timing or when a user wishes to highlight or learn more about an object prior to making a selection. It also helps to further reduce the risk of accidentally selecting a target as the user needs to explicitly confirm the selection. I'll now hand over to Shui Song, who will discuss the techniques and applications we built based on outline pursuits. Thank you, Chris. We demonstrate outline pursuits with the implementation of two concrete techniques, one for hands-free selection and one where it extends controller-based recasting each leverages a different course screen and selection confirmation mechanism. The hand-free version uses the head as a pointing mechanism for candidate selection when the calculated correlation is above a given threshold we assume the motion are matched and the corresponding target is selected. This technique allows for hand-free applications or for users to interact with out-of-reach objects without having to put down or stop interacting with virtual objects already in hand. We developed a virtual cityscape application to illustrate this technique. The application lets users explore the city and the buildings using only their head and eyes, with selection triggering additional information. Here, outlines not only show which buildings are interactive, but also use the in-selection process. Outlines adapt to a user's perspective and the nearby occluded buildings, allowing selection from all viewpoints and accurate selection. In contrast to other gaze-based techniques such as gaze to wheel, hands-free outline pursuits enables a user to gaze upon object for an indefinite period without making a selection. The second technique is controller-based outline pursuits, which utilizes controller-based pointing in the core screen stage and a button click to confirm the selection. We developed a room planner application to showcase the technique. 
users can select and manipulate objects that are occluded or in close proxy to each other without forcing the user to change their point of view or hand position. This means users are able to select an object with little hand movements and thus plan their hand placement for the following object manipulation. Separating disaggregation and confirmation stages allows the user to check additional details prior to confirming selection. We designed and conducted a user study to investigate the performance of the proposed outline pursuit techniques and gather the user feedback. In a VR environment, participants were tasked with selecting a target object among many as fast as possible. We vary the object densities, distance to the user, and the levels of occlusion. We measure section time, error rate, head and controller movement, and user preferences. For comparison against the hands-free outline pursuit approach, we use a gaze dwell technique, where a target is selected once the user has to wear upon it for one second. For comparison against the controller-based outline pursuit technique, we choose both controller and gaze-based recasting approaches. In both cases, confirmation is made via button click. Users found gaze to wear to be effective for selection at low occlusion because it required minimal effort. However, selection was difficult at high occlusion because of the imprecision of the eye tracker and the large amount of head movement required. Hands-free outline pursuits required minimal head movement and showed no difference with gaze to wear at high occlusion. However, it suffered from high selection times and error rates despite feedback stating the interaction technique was simple. This was in part due to some participants not reaching the required threshold for selection, which resulted in large variance across participants. Controller-based recasting proved to be very fast and the most popular selection technique However, users were less accurate with highly occluded targets and required more movement as the target distance increased. Case-based recasting was similar but deteriorated much more at high occlusion due to eye tracker imprecision and the limited range of movement of the head relative to the hands. In contrast, controller-based outline pursuits achieved a consistently low error rates across all conditions. It also required less movement from the participant. Independent of the level of the conclusion or distance to the target, preference wiser, users feel there was little difference between recasting and outline pursuits techniques. However, many favor the recasting because of the fast selection times at low occlusion. Now back to Ludwig for the conclusion. So to wrap up our talk, we presented Outline Pursuits, which is a novel technique for effective selection of occluded objects in virtual reality. Outline Pursuits does not require line of sight and requires minimal body movements for selection, making it ideal in situations with restricted movements. By adding to the already existing utility of outlines, objects can be selected without changing their properties. We demonstrate how combina combining Smooth pursuits for disambiguation with other modalities for confirmation reduces the parameter search space and risk of accidental activations, whilst providing more opportunities for the provision of feedback. Our results show the compelling advantages of outline pursuits for highly occluded targets, which opens up further possibilities of combining the techniques with alternative selection techniques to allow efficient selection at all levels of occlusion. And that was all we had for this presentation. Thank you for listening.